Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox, where we talk about all things Xbox from the original to the Series X, and on today's episode, we are reviewing an original Xbox launch title with Dead or Alive 3. As one of the earliest 3D fighting games to feature an arena-style combat, Dead or Alive is a huge franchise that has stood the test of time. Dead or Alive 3 was an exclusive launch title for the Xbox and was one of the key titles alongside Halo that helped establish the Xbox as a serious gaming platform. The game was a commercial success, selling enough copies to warrant a Platinum Hits version, which is the version that I own today. Since then, we've seen several more entries in the franchise on Xbox consoles, each one pushing the limits of what 3D fighting games can be. And this one is developed by Team Ninja and published by Tecmo. Dead or Alive 3 is a game that was exclusively built for the original Xbox. Even for a launch title in 2001, this game's visuals are nothing short of stunning. I had the opportunity to play it on both the original Xbox and the Series X because it is backwards compatible, and I was impressed both times on how great it looks. It's remarkable that a game released so early in the Xbox's lifespan was able to push the console's limits to this much of an extreme, and it remains one of the best looking original Xbox titles to date. The stages are really impressive with sharp designs and excellent depth. One stage that stands out to me is an aquarium stage with windows all around and beautiful lighting effects. The attention to detail and lack of any lag is truly impressive. Another standout stage takes place on a tower where you can knock down your enemies into neon lit streets, adding a nice dynamic touch to the game. Character models are also excellent with great motion and strong character details that makes them all stand out from each other. Every hit looks solid and the variety of motion for different characters is surprising. It's worth noting that the in-game character models actually look better than the ones in the end game cutscenes, which can be a bit jarring. However, this is an extremely minor issue considering the overall beauty of this game. One criticism that I do have for this game is the lack of variety in game modes. Although there are classic practice versus and story modes, story mode takes up most of your time, and then there's other modes like survival mode and time trial. And they're not very substantial. There's a lot, but not a lot to do. The tag team battle mode is a nice touch that adds some variety, but given that this is a fighting game, most of your playtime will likely just be in the versus mode where you can challenge other real life people to play. While I did not own this game during my time with the original Xbox and when I had it when it was popular and new, I am confident that it would have been a popular choice for parties and sleepovers growing up. I had the game Tao Feng, which is a weaker version of this game and I think we would have really appreciated something like Dead or Alive 3. Now I might be criticizing that there is a lack of variety in the game modes, but what changes that is that all of the game modes play great and it is an amazing playing game. The story mode, although brief, is a satisfying experience with arcade style stages that provide a decent challenge. Learning about positioning and combos is essential for beating some of the later opponents, making for a fun and engaging game experience. I found myself unable to put the game down, always coming back to learn every character and unlock their final scene. While the story itself is not complex or fully explained within the game, I really don't think that detracts from the main attraction of the game, and that's the fighting. And the fighting in this game is fast, fluid, and feels incredible. Each character has a unique personality and moveset that stands out to me. For example, you have a character like Brad Wong, who uses a drunken style that feels so fluid, with both extremely low and extremely high attacks that flow together seamlessly. He even turns around and fights, adding an extra layer of depth to his gameplay. Tina, on the other hand, is a professional wrestler with all classic wrestling moves. Seeing these two characters clash against each other is a real treat. Each character feels special, and I was able to play around with all of them and grasp what they were going for. What I love most about this 3D fighting game is its heavy emphasis on positioning. Your movement and position on the battlefield can affect everything about your fight. It's just not about solid attacks, it's about being in the right place at the right time. If your opponent is caught off guard, it could mean the entire game. 
I appreciate that it lets you think about things more strategically and where you should be positioned. Everything works perfectly and comes together to create an excellent experience. I should note that I am playing on the base game American version, and I am aware that the Japanese and European editions are upgraded and the official Xbox magazine was actually handing out patches for this game. But as far as I could tell, everything seemed exceptional to me here, but there may be more out there and I think it would be cool to try those out at some point. Unfortunately, since this is an Xbox launch title, there is no Xbox Live support. So there was no online play available. However, playing locally with friends, I'm sure is great fun. The music in this game is also good, but it's not the standout feature of the game for me. It does feature songs by Aerosmith, which may appeal to some players, but I personally am not a big Aerosmith fan. The sound effects are good though, with nice voice lines, and I always appreciate it when games keep in the original Japanese dialogue and subtitles. It gives a nice, authentic feel to the game. Overall, Dead or Alive 3 is an outstanding fighting game that combines excellent graphics with tight gameplay. It features a diverse cast of characters, each with their unique moves and personalities that emphasizes strategic positioning on the battlefield. Despite the lack of online play, it remains a great game to play with friends locally. I highly recommend checking this one out. And going to my original Xbox ranking list, Dead or Alive 3 is going to be placed at number 7. We are getting to the point where some of the best of the best are entering into the top 10, and it's going to get harder and harder and be a tough competition to get into those top slots. Now, I am putting it above Splinter Cell for its replay value. I think Dead or Alive 3 is a lot more replayable, and I'm going to put it below Max Payne because I really liked Max Payne's impactful story. But if you have any Dead or Alive memories, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have any recommendations, let me know. I'd love to put them on my recommendation list. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. But I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.